All right, hey guys, another thought I wanna share with you as I'm studying. Um, I'm taking a course in the life and theology of B.B. Warfield this summer, and I'm reading <clears throat> for that course uh, The Theology of B.B. Warfield, a Systematic Summary by Fred G. Zaspel. Here's the book, obviously. Uh, backwards because this is the front facing camera um the first chapter i think this is the chap first chapter i just opened this up yeah first chapter historical context uh zaspel is talking about the uh liberal theology environment that warfield was in in the late 1800s early 1900s and for theology students out there you know that the middle Middle to late 1800s was sort of a soaring time for higher criticism. Literally every doctrine of the Christian faith came under intense scrutiny. And um, in many ways, because of the work of people like Kuiper in the Netherlands, um, Warfield uh, in the United States, you have people like Van Til, who I love and study, um, taking a lot of uh, good things from both of those men and developing his own theology. But that's sort of a generation later. Anyhow, when this criticism began, Warfield was hard at work refuting and um, um, meeting the challenges of higher criticism. And from just a little bit that I've dug into Warfield so far, I think he did a good job. Um, Van Til certainly has uh, some good critiques of Warfield. Um, Greg Bonson uh, had some significant critiques of Warfield's apologetics. But on the whole, as a systematic theologian, as a reformed theologian, Warfield's awesome. Um, but there's something specific here. So uh, something specific I wanted to just kind of say out loud. And Warfield was, you know, um, engaging himself into this, uh, in, in this criticism. And Zaspel says this, Warfield was neither afraid of nor opposed to scientific criticism, even in reference to the Bible. Indeed, he championed the right, the right of criticism and was confident that by it the historic faith of the church had been all the more vindicated. This quote has me bothered. <laughs> and, <clears throat> and at one level, I want to say, right on, Warfield, if Zaspel is correct, right? I need to do some more study on Warfield to, to say that Zaspel is correct. Maybe, maybe he's wrong. Maybe Warfield, uh, um, maybe he did oppose scientific critique of the Bible, or maybe he did. Maybe his aspel is wrong. That's, that's one thing. Maybe he's not. I need to do more work on Warfield. Um, the very first phrase, though, Warfield was neither afraid of. Okay, I like that. I like that Warfield is like, bring it on. Like, there's no, there's nothing devised against us within the the realm of man that's going to take down the christian faith so bring it i i love that i like that i, I think some people even call uh, or i think it was a biographer and i don't remember who it was um who called warfield a lion right um so i like that not being afraid of it we shouldn't be afraid as christians we shouldn't be afraid of what man might do or what man might say about God, about Jesus, about Christian faith or whatever. And, and we should have that level of confidence. Um, I think what really got me bothered was when he says, indeed, he championed the right of criticism, criticism, <laughs> excuse me, the right of, they have a right to critique the Bible. This I don't like. I don't, I don't think you ever in the Bible can, can find a place where God is approving of man to come 
and put him to the test. Right? I think I think C.S. Lewis critiqued this, right? God in the dock. Uh wrong, wrong move, right? And this doesn't this is different than questioning. This is different than saying, um, God, can you please uh send your spirit to help me understand this Christian doctrine? Could you do that? Because I'm having a hard time understanding. That is a request of faith. Um the the <laughs> The request of Satan is saying, did God really say? Uh, is Jesus really divine? Did Jesus really raise from the dead? Uh, did Jesus uh, really do miracles? Um, was Mary really a virgin, even though Matthew says she had not known a man? So, you know, and and Joseph was like, oh, you've obviously, you know, broken our betrothal. So. Uh, we got to do something about this. That was those were the criticisms coming. They have a right to question God's word like that. It takes me right back to the garden when Warfield is, or when not Warfield, when the serpent is saying, "Did God really say if you eat of it, you'll die?" Really, I think he's just trying to keep it from you. Because, you know, and I think um, so. I think this is straight up wrong um if indeed this is what warfield did he championed the right of criticism and was confident that by it the historic faith of the church had been all the more vindicated i think he's dead wrong um and this may be the smallest little blunder of of warfield's theology i think he's uh i think he can be um i think you can benefit a lot from warfield um and then here's just something that is that has me, has me thinking. I got my, I got my spidey senses up. I want to pick up on this throughout the works that I have to read for this class because I don't like this. I don't like him thinking that, um, that the serpent has a right to question God's word, like that, where it's an where it's undermining its authority or undermining its clarity, right? So for over fifteen, sixteen, seventeen hundred years, the church has been. Uh, you know, fairly clear on the fact that Mary was a virgin, that Jesus um, was God, and he rose from the dead, and that he did miracles. These were the major things being uh, criticized during Warfield's time. We're not talking about, you know, minutia. We're talking about major doctrines of what it is uh, to be Christianity, like what, what that even means. So, um, I think, I think we need to have, um, the confidence where it says Warfield was neither afraid of. Yeah. We don't need to be afraid of any attack against Christianity. He's right. Nothing's going to bring it down. And I think Christianity will come out on the other end of it, whatever criticism it is vindicated. I think he's right there too. I think Warfield is 100% right. It doesn't matter. doesn't matter what assault comes against God, his people and his word. Um, they will be put to shame and his people will be exalted. And so we need to live in that confidence. Again, you can ask questions about, you know, you can you can ask um, God to send the Holy Spirit so that you can understand his word better as you should continuously. Warfield talks about that when it comes to like being progressive. Of course, that means something different back then than it does now. But Warfield's like, of course, we're supposed to progress. We're supposed to understand God's word better and better through the generations until uh, until our understanding is made perfect um, in glory, right? So yeah, okay, we continuously learn. We don't just stay put. The Christian faith is not, you know, a block of cement and then that's it. No, we, we do grow as a church, as a people, but I don't like this right, uh, right of criticism. And maybe that's just Zaspel's wording or his view of Warfield, and maybe maybe it's not true. So I gotta I gotta do some more digging. But hopefully I can do some more videos as I do this research, guys, and just share thoughts with you. And I hope um, I hope you guys read Warfield. Um, he uh, he left behind a great body of work that I'm really excited to dig into this summer for my class. And I'm thinking about doing a paper either on 
his his eschatology or on his uh his um his study of the cultural mandate one or the other so anyway if you want to leave a comment tell me which which one you think would be more of a fun study his eschatology because he was not post mill but kind of post mill and um and uh, i'm i like studying stuff about the cultural mandate what people think that means so anyway there's some thoughts on warfield and whether the bible should be criticized or not what should we think about biblical criticism so anyway hope you enjoyed it and i'll catch you next time